Tommy Cooper wanted his props. Frankie Howard demanded a script. He wanted the interview written down so he could rehearse the responses. We persuaded him against it, but you can see the nerve ends showing in the highlights from the two interviews I did with him. He wasn't a spontaneous performer. He rehearsed every ooh and every ah. Every ad lib was painstakingly worked on. The great Dr. Johnson, who knew a good comic when he saw one, observed that a comedian need not necessarily be a person of humorous disposition. He was thinking of Frankie Howard when he said it. Our first encounter occurred in the first year of the Parkinson show in 1971. <laughs> Please. Thank you very much. In fact, it's uh, a... Now, wait a minute. Let's make sure that you've got the same questions I've got the answers for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think so. Can we start off by telling everybody... Do! That, Do. in fact, today's an anniversary for you, isn't it? Because it's 25 years to the day. Big mouth. Of course, you would bring that up, yes. <laughs> 25 years? Well, for the, for, since what? Since you first appeared on radio. It's about 25 years since I did anything, actually, but... Uh, <laughs> You know what I mean, but um, <laughs> since uh, since <laughs> since I've been on radio, yes, radio. Oh, remember? That was Variety Bambox. Wasn't yes, it? 25 years ago. Yes, yeah. it was a Sunday. I did it on a Sunday. That's yeah. absolutely right. You're yeah. quite right. It's that it was Sunday, 25 years ago. Yes, yeah. I was still doing the same jokes. <laughs> when did you first realise that you wanted to be a comedian? When war was declared, and I went into the army, and that's when I started I, trying to be funny. I can't imagine you in the army. You're a sergeant as well, weren't well, you? I can't imagine it. Well, because you're hardly a man of sort of military Are you being... bearing. <laughs> being personal. <laughs> No. Yes, you are. You're being naughty, Michael. I was sympathising with you before because you said you had a bit of a bad throat tonight. That's true, yes. One's <clears throat> cutting. <laughs> yes, uh... no, 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 no. <laughs> We do the work against the money. <laughs> what, the, what, what, you're asking me about the I army. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yes, yes. yes. Carry on. Yes, about the army. I mean, did you enjoy the army? I enjoyed aspects of it because, uh, first of all, as I started off, before I went into the army, I was intensely shy and having to mix with all sorts of different kinds of people we have seen we were all in nissen huts in barrack rooms one had to learn to cope with other people and learn to be less shy and also i found you see what they did then they they said we're going to put on some shows at the ymca tonight is that anyone can do anything and i thought i don't know if i ought to and i got very nervous eventually i plunged and I said, yes. I said, I think I could do a little bit of something. So they said, what can you do? So I said, well, I think I could sing a little song. Would you believe? Sing. So I couldn't sing then either, but still, never mind. It was supposed to be, supposed to be funny. And it was a song called Three Little Fishes. Now, this is a long time ago. And um, I thought I'd do this little song. I did a lot of squeaks in it. Little squeaks, you know, these, ooh, and I, that's the first time I did it. Right, go. Now down in the meadow, in a little fishy pool, lives three little fishes and a mama fishy too. Now swim, said the mama fishy, swim if you can. <laughs> Are you taking the mickey? So they swam and they swam right over the dam. The comedian, Frank, is often seen as a sort of lonely, insecure, even tragic figure. Yeah. Is this, is this true? Is it true of yourself? Is this the way that you feel? Lonely, insecure. Mm. You'd, well, I mean, let's take an example. I mean, let's take Hancock as yeah. an example. I mean, he came to a very sad end. Yeah. Um, have you ever contemplated suicide as he did? No. I've contemplated murder. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any, any funny or bitter memories about really dying the death, Frankie? Uh, going badly, you mean? Yeah. Well, I'm, yes, I've gone badly. Many, I mean, 25 years is a long time, and yeah. I've had ups and downs, a lot of ups and downs, and I've had a lot of times when I've gone badly, and if I may say, a lot of times when I haven't been very good, and I've come off and I've missed time gags. I've done jokes, uh, and I've got the... And I've suddenly thought, now, they didn't laugh. Now, why is my manager... It's gone off and said, you bloody fool, you forgot the funny line at the end. <laughs> 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 I promise you this is true. I was just thinking, though, before, the first musical joke I ever did was about this old man, poor old boy, 82, and he went to the doctors. So, wait a minute, so this doctor said, <laughs> what's wrong? So the man said, nothing wrong. He said, uh, he said the thing is, I'm, uh, I'm 82, you see, so I want you to examine me, because he said, 
I'm getting married. Saturday. <laughs> so the doctor said, married? Mm. He said, oh, yes, I want you to examine me and make sure I'm in good working order, because he said, <laughs> I want to, you know, to be right for the honeymoon, and I want to... So the, the doctor said, well, uh, who are you marrying? So this girl, the man said, well, a girl, naturally. Well, the doctor said, oh, look, don't be facetious. He said, how old is this girl? He said, 24. <laughs> And she's 24. Dear, oh dear. Well, he said, well, take uh, uh, that's, yes. Well, <laughs> he said, well, yes. He said, you don't seem to, yes. He seemed to be all, yes. He said, you should. But he said, so the old boy said, I'm 82. Could you give me any advice? Well, he said, well, yes. He said, you don't seem to, yes. He said, you should. But he said, so the old boy said, I'm 82. Could you give me any advice? You see, so the doctor said, well, he said, if you're 82 and she's 24, there is quite a discrepancy <laughs> in the ages. Could I suggest to you, you took in a young lodger? Because, you see, you're out getting your old age pension. She's on her own a lot. It'll be company for her. It'll keep her happy and satisfied. It'll, you'll find it'll be a much, there'll be connubial bliss taking a young lodger. So this old boy said, I'll do that then, right? It, young lodger, so we off he went, you see. Now, a year later, he was going down the high street on his lambretta, and of course this <laughs> doctor saw, he said, here. So this old boy went over, he said, here. So he said to the doctor, the doctor said, how are you getting on? He said, all smashing, lovely. He said, how's the marriage going? He said, all smashing, lovely. Smash he said, how's your wife? He said, oh, she said, smashing, he said, smashing. Uh, she just had a baby. So the doctor said, had a baby, oh. So he said, well, how's the lodger? Oh, he said, she's had one as well. <laughs>